Good morning. Welcome back to First Mount Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. God has blessed us to come up to this present hour, and we pray that God has been a blessing to you, as certainly He's been a blessing to us all. He woke us up this morning and started us on our way, and certainly we want to give God the praise. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we come rejoicing and being glad in it. Join us in our message on today. Yeah. <laughs> 
the land of the free uh, unjustly become more and more challenged of her standards and ways of life. Yet, my brothers and sisters, we continue to find ourselves placed in a position of the unknown of what will come next. And many of us today are asking ourselves, Lord, what next? What's going to happen next? What, what's going to come next? We're living in a time, I tell you, of which we call the current event and the manner of which we are being dropped on us that we can't help but say it's unknown to me. Have I got a witness here? Yes, yes, yes. We just don't know the unknown time of what to expect next. And a lot of us are living right now on pins and needles, trying to figure out what's next. What are we going to have to endure next? What's coming down the pipe? What, what's, what are we going to have to bear next? What are we going to have to face next? Never would we have ever thought that a virus would bring about such a devastating blow to not just only our society, but this virus has damaged the whole wide world. For even yesterday alone, it was reported, my brothers and sisters, and you have to listen to this, even yesterday alone, it was reported that there had been a total of 34.6 million cases, whereby 24.1 had recovered. But 1.03 million people had died from this one virus called COVID-19. Well, while yet, as we, as we, as we, as we that are here in this United States of America, taps into those numbers, we brought in an alarming number of 7,362,516 Million of those numbers came from the U.S. And not only that, but, but 208,562 as of yesterday, death had come to America in an unknown time. I wish I had a witness of here. Maybe that's why the gospel writer, maybe that's why the gospel writer informed and challenged us. The gospel writer informed us in the gospel of Matthew about dealing with unknown pleasures as well as displeasures. The gospel writer, you do remember, the gospel writer tells us in Matthew 6 and 34, he tells us this, he tells us to take each day as it comes. Matthew 6 and 34, take each day as it comes. Look at what he said. In other words, life comes with each day holding its own offering. Life brings you something every day. But God gives us mercy every day as well. I wish I had some help in here. Life comes with something new every day and that we should handle it just as that. Look at what it says as, as we plan for the next day. He says, not knowing what that really is. He said, take therefore no thought for the morrow. And for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Now, if I were to give you a point in that, in, that, in, that, in that theory of lesson today, each day has its own offering. Point number one, each day has its own offering. Be it good or bad, and we don't know what lies ahead, thus we are living in an unknown time. If any one of us could have prevented this crisis we're facing and seeing from an unknown eye, it would have been pretty hard to have not tried to stop it unless you have evil intentions in you. And I don't believe people just would, would intentionally try to kill people. Who, who, who would have ever thought that we'd see a once thriving and flourishing country like America? Who would have ever thought that we would see this country called the USA? The United States of America. Who would have ever thought that we would see this country struggling with job losses? Struggling with people with severe illnesses fighting uh, to be tended to? Or who would have ever thought that after the early 50s and early 60s and, and even in, attempted in the 70s that race and racism would once again show her ugly head at being an issue. Now, I don't, I don't know about you this morning, my brothers and sisters, but racism certainly ought not be an issue. 
If anything should be an issue, that should not be an issue. In fact, in this unknown time that we're living in, maybe those that are pushing in this, this ungodly way should, should do this as they say they're doing and upholding the law of the land. Those, those that are pushing to see things go eerie, those that's pushing and thriving to see things go wrong, those that's pushing to see things go back like they used to be. Maybe they should consider the same law of the land in which they are thriving from. How could racism be an issue when the country is made up, listen to this, when the country is made up of many, many, many races who, who, who were also interracially married? How could this country be caught up in racism? This thing goes back to at least 1967, when as number 45 found his mother stood in the courts. He, he thinks stood in the courts to solve the problem. It was the same court that unhinged the right to have an open marriage amongst races through the case of, 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 of loving versus Virginia and decided that the anti-mistization laws were unconstitutional. Somebody ought to tell them that in the White House. And that, my brothers and sisters, the slum must be and has to be an unknown fact. You ought to tell somebody the struggle is real. The struggle is real. Why don't you look back in your sanctuary and tell somebody the struggle is real. The struggle is real. We are daily trying to get a handle on each day. And to see that if the world in time is going downhill. It seems like the world is going downhill. It seems as if the chain of time has been stripped of its pace. Can I get a witness in here? Let me say that again. <laughs> it seems as if the chain of time, it seems like time has been stripped of its pace in which it flows. It seems like time, time is moving faster than normal. Days go by faster than they used to. Am I right about it here? Weeks are looking as a few days and months are staring weeks down. And what would seem to be a gap of a day, an hour, a minute, and even a second has kicked into another gear. And it's unknown time. It's unknown almost as to where has time gone. It's even unknown for how we have come to this day so quick with so much turmoil around us. And I wanted to encourage someone today. I wanted to encourage someone as I heard him through. I wanted to encourage someone on this morning by saying to you, point number two, don't get left behind. Catch up with time. Don't get left behind Catch up with time. Even though we can't put our bearings together to grasp all of the things that are being thrown before us, just know that the presence of the Lord is still there. God is still God has left us. Even though it seems like we're all in this all by ourselves, God has not left us. I wish I had a witness of it. The Hebrew writer wasn't just writing Hebrew 13 and 5. When he said that God will never leave us and we face these unknown and unforeseen, I call it on last week test. God has not left us. Nor has God turned away and left us. After all, we're still here. And God is still with us. Why don't you tell somebody God has not left us? Don't, don't think just because it seems like the end is near that we're all alone to defend ourselves. Didn't God promise? In Exodus 14 and 14, didn't God promise that whatever battle we face, whatever we go up against, whatever confrontation comes our way, whatever battle we have to stand up and fight for, God will fight our battle. Look at, look at Exodus 14 and 14. God says, God said he will fight for us when we just get out of the way and find peace. That God, that Jehovah Jireh, that battle right, he, he will fight for us. Somebody help me. What are you struggling for? What are you going through things that you don't have to go through for? Why are you trying to fight the devil when you can't fight the devil? You can't sin. God promises that he will fight all of our battles. I wish I had a witness in here. What are you fighting for? What are you struggling for? What, what are you gaining or getting out of your fighting besides high blood pressure? 
What what are you getting? What what are you gaining in your fight besides diabetes? What are you gaining out of your fight when you're doing nothing but catching a stroke? Wearing and tearing down the arteries and veins and causing poor blood flow. Might be even causing a lack of oxygen to your brain. What are you trying to gain trying to fight somebody you can't see? Turn that that you can't handle or control, turn it over to God and let God fight your battle. In an unknown time, let God fight your battle because it's unknown to you. What to do? I once preached a message. What do you do when you don't know what to do? Turn it over to God. Turn it over to God. When you don't know what to do, when you have at your, when the scripture says, when we're at our weak sin, turn it over to God and allow God to handle your problem. Maybe a good question would be for that. What can I do with the unknown? What can I do with the unknown? Ask yourself today. Lord, what can I do with the unknown? I don't even know what's happening. I don't even know what's attacking me. What can I do? What can we do with the unknown besides give it to someone that can handle the unknown? The unknown. Just in case you didn't know. The unknown is something you and I are unfamiliar with. The unknown is something that's undisclosed. The unknown is something that we've never seen before, we've never encountered. And a whole lot of us are wrestling and fighting and losing battles because we're fighting something that we don't even know what it is. It's a place we've never been to. And trying to resolve it should be given to God. And so I want to tell you today, here, Mark who thrives on bringing the message. Mark, besides the brightness, tries to bring this message of bringing the good news, better yet, the gospel. It was Mark who, back in the beginning of his writing, that tags the appearance of Christ. He tags the appearance of Christ at the beginning of his writing in chapter 1 and verse 15 and inspires us, the readers. First of all, he inspires us through the word to repent and believe the good news. One thing, in order to get somewhere, we've got to start believing the Word of God. We, we, we've got to get into the Word of God and believe that every word is true. Have I got a witness here? The good news of the day is that even though it may seem as if the world is at a point of no hope, I wish I could help somebody, no return, even though we seem to be mesmerized by time and distractions, Time that's filled with questions after questions and distractions that take our focus off of time. What are we doing? What Christ is preparing the disciples here, as well as the church for us, is knowing how to deal with the unknown. We're dealing with an unknown time. In this case, we're dealing with unknown time. We, we can't figure out where this time came from. And what Christ is preparing us for is the unknown. And as we disseminate these words of Christ at the pen of Mark, we should see how it is Christ makes the unknown not to be, first of all, not to be our concern, but his concern. And that is when unknown things are brought into our lives. The best thing that we can do, and look at the instructions that he gave to his disciples. The best thing to do is to pray and watch. Why pray and watch? Because when watching, watching requires our attentive observation, which comes with a cautious move. We, we don't move too soon when we're watching. I wish I had a witness here. You, you've heard it say, don't make your move too soon. We don't move too soon when we are truly watching as the Lord says what? Well, and certainly praying. Praying is essential in every step that we take. Praying is the key to every situation. And not only every situation, but every problem. Praying is the most promising way to reach God. It's prayer. It's prayer. 
that was pinned by Mark at the response of Christ for dealing with the unknown. Christ divinely knew his humanly outcome, but the unknown was to those that knew him more, so didn't know him. And even though we're living in an unknown time, the same Christ that gave us hope through his word is able to give us hope today. Do I have a witness here? Look at what he says in his word. He says, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son but the Father. That takes us to our thought. The Bible will let us know. Eyes have not seen, nor have we have heard. What great things God has in store for us, nobody knows. Have we got a witness here? And then he says, take thee heed, watch and pray, for you know not when time is. In other words, we don't know when he's coming back, but one thing we do know, whether we're ready or not, he's coming back. So he says, in the midst of time, keep trusting and keep watching and praying that everything will be all right. Jesus came in an unknown time and left at a prophetic time. Jesus came 42 generations ago, walked amongst the mundane shores, went about doing good. Have we got a witness here? Started an earthly ministry at the age of 30 and at the age of 33, departed and went back to heaven in an unknown time. Just as time brought him here, time will bring him again in an unknown time. My question to you this morning as I hurry on through, will you be ready within this unknown time? As much as we're facing, as much as we're going through, will you be ready in this unknown time? God bless you today and God keep you with our prayers. We certainly want to make it open to anyone that does not have a church home, that does not have a church family, and certainly does not have a relationship with Christ. If you're out there today, if you're listening to this message, preferably this message has helped you a little bit and helped you to be inspired to know that Jesus is real and that he is able to save, heal, and deliver. Turn your life over to the Lord. One day he is coming back. And he's coming back in an unknown time. The Bible says, no man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall come again. Will you be ready? Will you be ready when he comes? God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. This is Pastor Michael Smith. Pray to see you or hear you again one day soon. God bless you.